Welcome to Bean Stuff. Today, we are talking about socks. Oh, yeah. And not the type of socks that you would think of on your feet. But uh, it is another method for, for brewing coffee. It's amazing. Funny that, enough, we're talking yeah, about coffee. Socks and coffee. How can it be? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're talking today specifically about, I guess it's called the coffee sock. That's right. That's the, is that the only name? I mean, that's the only name I think of when I think of it. But Yeah, that's what's typically known as. There's an, there's an older sort of way it's done. There's a newer way it's done. But uh, you would typically call it the, the, the sock method. The sock method. And so for those of you who are not sure what the sock method is, if you're watching on YouTube... We'll put a sock right here. Nice. Right here, beautiful sock. Um, but for anybody listening, the sock is essentially, it, it is like a fabric, and we'll get kind of more into the details, but just so you have an idea, um, it is a you know a, a cotton fabric sock, uh, often attached to like a wire or something like that, and it's used to hold coffee while you brew it. Um, so let's talk about uh, what what are some good aspects of the sock for the for the planet, I guess, to start off with. Right, uh, and there are, and if you're interested, if you're keen on these things, it's going to be a, a way to, to make coffee. I mean, uh, rather than paper, obviously, you've got a sock, which is renewable. You can clean the sock if you want to and uh, make coffee again rather than throw it out. And so, therefore, it's, there's no paper involved, which can, you know, not help the planet. Yeah, I mean, the... the, the... The sock method uses a use a reusable um, method for brewing. So uh, it's like a lot of times when we talked about, I think, early on in one of the podcasts about the cone filter and how it's a reusable filter for you know any kind of method you're looking for there to use with it. Um, but the sock method allows you to have a reusable, almost like a almost I would I would guess I would say a reusable paper paper filter. But it's actually it's got more uses than just you know what you would think of for a paper filter. Um, Another thing that's kind of cool is the packability of the sock. That's right. A lot of people would like to use this. It's a good thing to go camping with. Uh, it just doesn't take much space up in your backpack there. You can just squash it up in there and bring it out when you need to. And yeah. you've got coffee camping. And it and it yeah, it's it's like packing a sock. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, it's very so. I mean, it, it is. It packs so small mm -hmm. and easily. The only thing that I would say is maybe cleaning it might be a little more difficult while you're camping. Well, but even that's got some controversy to it in terms of <laughs> some say don't clean your sock, and I'm talking about a coffee sock here, right? And and the cough, the 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 or the sock, the cloth filter. Where was this? Was it first? used in i think in our notes here shows malaysia is that correct oh well it's known in asia um more than other parts of the world yeah and malaysia is one of the places they still use it quite a lot um and when i was doing some research on the sock method uh there's lots of places in malaysia there's some caribbean places you can go to there's wow. south america costa rica seem to be crop up a number of times um mexico singapore indonesia in thailand you'd go to a uh, a, a coffee street vendor and we've been doing that for decades cuba you go to a, a cafe or ask for a cafe carreterio yeah um, and so it's it's out there it's just we haven't heard it so much right i mean it's impressive how well used it is and yet you know at least for me it doesn't seem like it's as popular on the western side of the Mm -hmm. so where it's, we it's, are here. It has a resurgence recently. So mm. like a lot of these coffee methods uh, have come around again and they've been modified in certain ways and voila, there you are. You can, you can go and get a, a coffee sock now. Yeah, so where, where did the coffee sock kind of, how did it come about? What was its, what's its origin story? I would imagine, and I, I don't know if anyone actually knows, but typically I think it makes sense that you're somewhere in the world, you want a cup of coffee, right? you don't have paper, a paper filter, you can't just go to the store and buy some, some filters, so what do you do? You look around, you look around the household right. and say, oh, um, that could be a filter, and and somewhere along the line this side found socks would work and now you can start to to go further with that and think okay clean socks are good okay secondly uh this one this type of socks that has more more cotton in it mm. is better this one has more thread patterns in it this one has a you know more threads than this one it actually tastes better i mean it depends how nerdy you're going to get in, in that situation but basically you don't have filters um the paper filters that we're used to and uh, what's available 
I mean, it is. I mean, you think about it like it. You know, you could starting off, you could use like your T-shirt, or you could use. That's there's, right. There's a lot of different things that would emulate kind of that that coffee filter there. The coffee shirt. A coffee shirt. Hey, that could be a thing. <laughs> we could have a whole coffee clothing coffee line. hanky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Um. But yeah, so it, it's. I mean, you know, early cotton using it, and it, it does make more sense. You know, before the invention of paper, or before mm-hmm. it was widely available, and even in places where paper may may not be fully available. I know we when we talked to Mike and Emily McIntyre, they talked about <clears throat> they couldn't find paper filters when they were in Ethiopia to make pour overs and different things with. So they had to they had to search far and wide. So even in places like that, that can be a, a good uh, you know good thing, and it makes sense that that's. Kind of where it may have come, That's come right. and, from, and we yeah. are so, I guess, privileged. We're so, so such many things available mm. in terms of, let's call it the modern sock, and now we're moving away from cotton, which has its reasons why that's good right uh but you're getting all these different methods now the hario the chemex the cone they can all use they all uh, you look on the internet and you find there's a whole lot of special cotton socks for those methods yeah not so this is not just paper now we've got cotton socks that uh, fit different methods that then replicate this idea of the sock method of of brewing coffee well and i think that kind of ties into our what we've dubbed the uh, the chemistry section of this podcast today, but there are four four main brewing types or methods or processes, I guess you could say. That's right. Well, before you get to that one, Reed, yeah. there's, a, there's more chemistry than this. Oh wow! And that is, as I alluded to a little moment ago, the cotton itself mm. has some pr- uh, principles that that of the cotton that make it a good medium for coffee to go through. Really. Cotton is made of ninety percent cellulose, right? Therefore, cellulose, which is tasteless, doesn't add any any taste to the coffee. Wow! So suddenly, okay, that's an advantage. I can see why someone would like this. There's no odor mm. with the cotton, um, and that uh, that helps uh, taste the natural flavors of the coffee. Co- uh, cotton is insoluble in water. Therefore, it's not going to be <laughs> your filter's not going to disappear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's 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 it helps. And as we sort of said before, mm. I think um, from uh, Bill from Bill's Beans mentioned yeah. uh, the different weaves and different brands there where you can get of these different socks. So yeah, and I think of it kind of like I think of it kind of like sheets. You know, different sheets have mm-hmm. different thread counts, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And yeah, Bill was saying that yeah, different brands can have different weaves of sock. Yeah, so. You may not get the same exact result from sock to sock. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, and I think that's a, that's an important thing to know because one thing that I had thought was I think of cotton and I think of like you know if you stain your shirt, typically the stain stays in your shirt, you know, depending on what it is. But you're using coffee. Is that going to stain? You know, if I use a Ethiopian one day and a Guatemalan the next day, am I going to be staining some flavors into that sock that are going to? harm the flavor of the next you know it, yes. maybe it doesn't harm maybe it just yes. changes and that would be the advantage i guess if you're going to go for paper that you're, you're throwing out and starting completely fresh again right but with the cotton sock you can you can do stuff to that to to alleviate that that problem if it is a problem right you could rinse it we're going to look at this in a moment rinse it you could wash it completely mm. you could boil it uh so or there, you could leave it, leave it as is yeah, yeah so there's there's some ways to kind of navigate around those potential yeah. Potential issues there. Um, before we dig into that, so we'll go through those these kind of four main uh, methods of, mm. of brewing. The first one, I'm. It's just I haven't really seen it done. It's not. I would say it's the least done out of the four that we have here today. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the, I would say that the sock. What's cool about it is you can actually do any of these four with the sock. That's, that's you may have to get different types of the sock. True, but. you could. You could actually. It's it's interesting thought. And these are four methods general that are used in when we make a cup of coffee. Mm. You use one of these. Uh, it's got a little more scientific name, but you're going to use one of these methods, and right. it, will, it will fit into one of those categories. And the first category uh, category is called decoction. I think, believe I'm saying that right. We looked it up on Google, and Google pronounced it the that's same. That's how Google said it. So, <laughs> and that's really extraction. And here, we're, all these methods we're extracting, we're taking the flavor, right. the water's coming through. We're taking that flavor into the water so that we can drink it. Mm-hmm. And this one's extraction via boiling. This is decoction. And at first, we when we were reading this, we were thinking, you know, pouring boiling water into something. But I, 
I think the best way that I could describe it is if you were to have a pot of boiling water on the stove, mm-hmm. and then you put a tea bag in there, mm-hmm. and you continued to boil the water like it was a rolling boil mm-hmm. constantly. It's not pouring hot water into a cup and then putting the tea bag mm-hmm. in. It's it's putting you know in this case the coffee into a a a, a boiling. A rolling boil. So if you're using a sock, that would be there's there's some socks you can get where you put the coffee in it and you can actually like cinch the top close. It's essentially like a long tube sock. Um and then you would basically dunk that into the boiling water. Um and I think you had said that the Turkish was it Turkish coffee? Oh well the whole decoction, there's there's different mm-hmm. methods that right. are, are used out there. What you just described uh, with the sock that you can do, you, that's probably, most, a lot of people know that as cowboy coffee. Yeah. Where you're on the range there, you've got the coffee and you just yeah, got the pot on there and you just yeah. boil it away and you've got your coffee. The uh, more uh, a common one it would that people may know more of is the, the Turkish coffee. Mm. That's where f- you know, you've got the finer ground coffee into a narrow little pot that's got a certain name. You add sugar, you add spices like cardamom. And you boil it over the heat. Right. You remove it and you pour it into small cups. And that's that's used in Africa, Middle East, Russia. You know, that's used a lot of places. And I mean, <clears throat> even go back to like the cowboy coffee, this is this is potentially one of the more simple methods as far as, you know, you just need a source of boiling water mm-hmm. and then to put the coffee in it with, you know, for instance, a sock. Some, you, you might even put nothing in there and just put the coffee grounds in and strain it on the way mm-hmm. out. And or, that's, yeah, that's yeah. some people do it just like that, which makes it for camping and makes the simplicity of it is one of its positives that uh, it's not hard uh, to do. The second one after decoction would be infusion. Mm. Infusion, which really is, as the name infers, it's through steeping. It's through this gradual process of the, the flavors are extracted uh, by placing them in hot water in cold brew situation would be in cold brew, right? And uh, and the, the 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 flavors come out as it's sitting in the coffee. And probably a famous one would be the French press in there. Yeah, and I think this is kind of the description of making a regular cup of tea. Yeah, you have a tea right. bag. You put yeah. boiling water over it. Um, but like you said, that's going to be French press is a big big one. Um, I. Even AeroPress has some portion of that to it. Obviously, AeroPress always ha- also yeah. has the pressure part, but you do let it kind of steep yeah, in there. Yeah, that's true. So and I think they all can. You can it's interesting all these methods. You can right, do yeah. little bits of this in each of them, but just typically that's the French press, that's the tea bag or coffee bag, which is out there too. Right. And uh, and the sock. This is another way you can do a sock is the uh, the infusion method. And I think it's interesting, just the versatility of the sock. So, like, let's say you don't have a pour over, but maybe you don't have a lot of methods of brewing at the moment. You know, maybe the sock's an interesting way to branch out into multiple methods because mm-hmm. you could do infusion, you could do uh, decoction, or you know, other methods as well. But it gives you a little bit more. You can stretch out what you have mm. with the sock a little bit more. And hopefully, hopefully you're still listening. Uh, we've got decoction. We've got uh, the infusion. Uh, infusion. Third one, pretty simple to understand. This is, uh, we would call it gravitational feed. Yeah, and this is going to be what we all see most commonly as the pour over. Exactly, um, exactly. If anybody out there is using a drip machine, that's also using the same gravitational feed. Exactly. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty common one that we see yeah. gravitational. That's right, so... As as the name suggests, again, and and all drip methods, basically, mm-hmm. the the coffee is held above the water, not in the water. The water goes in and it drips slowly through the gravitational pull. Down it goes. I can't right. remember what gravitational ten times something to the eighth of was. I, I you know more than I do. No, I just, <laughs> I just yeah. Anyway, but uh, and you, you've got that in many methods, and mm. the sock is as you were just saying, Rita, is, is versatile, and you and probably today used more this way is resting it on top, and you get a hurryo that I have at, at, at Caravan there, and it it rests on top, and you really make it. We'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, the same as you would a, a drip or a cone or a chemex or whatever it may be. Yeah. And I, this, I think, is, I don't want to say it's one of the, it, it's it's a fairly simple method as well. Um, and you can also extract great flavor. I mean, all these methods you can you can do that with. Um, but yeah, I think we had, you brought home at one point the little Hario. It looks almost like a chemex mm-hmm. container, but then it has a sock with a little 
handle on it that kind of goes over mm-hmm. the top. And yeah. you can get a Chemex one that has a cotton filter that fits into the Chemex. Yeah. You can get one that fits into the cone. You can f- So th- th- they're making a lot of different ones that are out there of, of the actual cotton rather than the paper filter. So it relates more to the, the sock idea. Right. And I think we were looking at it earlier, but like percolators are also going to fall. Well, I guess percolators, maybe not so much. Yeah, it does. It falls. It's a gravitational. It goes up and falls down. It doesn't just not push oh, yeah. down. Yeah, it you're just right. Couple, it's, uh, it's forced up through a vacuum idea. The V60 would also. Yeah, V60, that. the Chemex, the cones I mentioned. They're all, all uh, ways of gravitational. And you uh, know what, Dad? Feed. What? I think I lied. What's that? Because I said that the sock would be involved in all methods that we're explaining today, but you know what? I don't know if it fits into this uh, this this fourth one. Here. Oh, the pressurized percolation. Yeah. Good news, Reed. You got good news. Some people would say you could be right. Ooh. Well, I say that, well, a pressurized percolation, is, as it says, there's pressure involved, and that's typically the espresso machine. And that's where I was thinking. I was like, ooh, I don't know if that's possible. And but. why I say some may sort of say, well, you could do it. Um, and I have read that people doing using some sock cotton yeah. filter in the AeroPress. And that's what I've heard. I mean, I made an AeroPress this morning, and I was using just a paper filter. And I mm-hmm. thought, man, if this was if this was cotton, this would be very challenging. <laughs> It'd be interesting. It'd be a different yeah. different beast. But uh, but the idea of the AeroPress has got pressure. You push pressure onto it. Mm. And that's where people start saying it's more like an espresso. And Ooh, there's, yeah. there's a good there's, – you can talk about that. Um, uh, I, I typically you would say an espresso machine gets up to a certain bar pressure, 8, 9 bar pressure, yeah. whereas you can't really get that on on an AeroPress. And the other one is the, the mocha pot. That's mm. often talked about as an espresso. And I, I actually remember the AeroPress too, on the, the labeling, it talks about as an espresso. Um, so so I might squeak by on this one. You might, but you're going to have to do some research on that to, 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 to I might have put, some, put your case out there. I might have to do a little bit of digging to get myself out of that hole. That's right. That's right. So there's a lot of modern use with, with the, the, the cotton... Mm. The sock, as we said, and uh, you can look up a number of ways. If you want to give this a go, you can just go to your sock drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work as well, but it's, it, yeah, yeah. If you do, go find one that's hundred percent cotton. That'd and be good. Clean. Yep. If you got, you know, it's it's all the good things we said before. <laughs> uh, if you're not going to do that, you could go online and you could look at buying a sock or go somewhere and buy buy a, a, a particular sock that would suit your method of mm. preparation for coffee. And there's a lot of them out there. And I think another piece is looking over your shoulder when you're looking at socks earlier on Amazon. But the, 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 a lot of them are really not that expensive, ten dollars, yeah. something like that. So yeah. it's you know it's a fairly as opposed to like the cone. Sometimes those can be a little bit more expensive. The cone with a K. Um, right. They have a little, they get a little more cost to them. So if you want a reusable, you know, filter for your Chemex or for your pour over, it might actually be a little bit cheaper than going for like a, a stainless or gold. Option. Right. The um. Because even with a uh, buying a sock, I don't. There's different depends on how much you use it, how long it's going to last. Some would say a right. year, and if you're washing it, it's maybe less. Well, that's true too. You think about your clothes eventually wear out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Whereas, like the cone, the stainless steelness of that, it, it's got a much longevity. As much, it, it it lasts a lot longer. That's true, but it's not as packable. It's no, you don't want to pack up. <laughs> no, you definitely you don't want to be folding that up. <laughs> um, so I, I, I know we kind of talked about it already, but when you were first, so when we're first using it, are is it important to rinse the sock? To to, I mean, I've heard of boiling it. What's the? Yeah, there's there's a bit of uh, people think different things here. Yeah. and go different ways. There's definitely the camp um, of washing it every time you use it, and when yeah. I washing it, you know. <laughs> even putting it into the, the washing machine and putting stuff in there to make it white as white. But I don't, uh, I don't know, though, because if you start using soap, mm-hmm. oh, you know, you start adding it into a whole other variable. There. Exactly. So therefore, some would say, let's go halfway and let's rinse it. Right. <laughs> which that's sort of where I, I put myself, but uh, more moderation. And by the rinsing, you're going to keep some of the oils. Right. You're not going to have a soap or something to break down exactly, everything. Exactly. And, and the third party would say, no, don't wash it at all don't rinse it at all because those oils you want to keep the oils there because next time you make the coffee mm. it's going to be even better so there's three camps there you can put yourself into one of those and kind of like i had said earlier if you're switching between coffees you're going to get different oils and uh, mm-hmm. that could be good 
It could be. Could be horrible. But it could be, it could be good. <laughs> I think I watched a YouTube video of someone making it with a sock, and I remember that they pulled up the sock, and I thought, "Wow, that's a dirty sock." Right. But you know, it 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 is just that that's one way of doing it. Um, mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. keeping it with all the oils. Yeah, and if you so you buy one online, you know, and you get one that's got a good cotton thread, um, the amount of cotton in there, and uh, you, you may need to work with that too. You don't want perhaps two two uh, thread count. I think they call it. Uh, it may the, uh, the water may not go through. Depending so, on the method, if you're doing like a if you're doing a gravitational feed, mm-hmm. you know, if you have if you aren't allowing enough water through, you're going to get potentially too much extraction, that kind of thing. But then you have to start looking at your grind size. So maybe the, the you know the the weave of the actual fabric will affect the grind size you use. So with a sock, maybe you have to do a coarser grind than you would with a paper filter. Yeah, like all coffee methods, and there's there's experimentation. And with all coffee methods, every day you may need to do something a little. You may change the grinder slightly. You may put more water in less. What there's lots of variations that you're going to need to do every day. And here's a question I have. So you know like the kind of soot you get at the bottom of a cup of coffee sometimes when you're done? Mm-hmm. It's like if you use a like cone, sometimes you get a little bit more soot, I would call it. Yes. Um, with the with the sock, when you've made it in the past, do you find you have that silt, or that, that coffee soot in the back? Or is it, I guess my question is, is it, is it noticeably more, less, or? If anything, probably it may be a little less, I'm thinking. I haven't made a lot of sock coffees, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but when we did do that, uh, when Brandon and I were making different sock coffees we we found there was it was a cleaner um in the bottom compared to like a french press that you get a lot of grinds right. in the coffee even though you've pushed the plunger down the the, the, it's, the the sieve's gone through and but you still get a lot of fines as we call them uh, yeah. in the coffee but with with drip style filters paper and um the the the, the, the sock it's probably going to make a cleaner cup you're not going to get as many depending on again what sort of sock you're using <laughs> right if you're using a sock with a hole in it oh, oh right. <laughs> um so we'll just briefly go through kind of the the methods for using or one one way you could do it um mm-hmm. so the infusion method is one we're going to kind of go it's, through it's a common one the infusion method and the gravitation are the most common ones here with the sock for what what i know of and i think the infusion is a little bit more i mean obviously there's a lot that use it but it, you know it it's a I think it's a little bit different with a sock because you, it's almost like using like a tea bag, which yes. is a little bit different to most other infusion methods like French press, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yes, yes, um, yes. And I would like to say, actually, a friend of mine, um, Braden, uh, we had talked about this, but with the using the infusion method with French press, after you plunge the French press, mm-hmm. the grounds are still in the coffee. So you still have somewhat of an extraction going on. Mm-hmm. But if you're using the sock, you actually take that coffee out of the, or the, the ground coffee out from your coffee. So you're actually not getting um, <coughs> the same level of extraction. And so I think that that's one thing that I was like, yeah, that's actually a really good point. Mm-hmm. Because with French press, after you make it, it's like, you're going to make it and drink it. Whereas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, again, you don't want to be just sitting there with your coffee cooling off like crazy. But it does give you that extra benefit of there's no, you're, 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 pretty much stopping the extraction. Some people would even, for a French press, which I like, they would pour the coffee into a, like a thermos, yeah. so it's more than one cup, obviously, so that they can stop that extraction process going on, and then they yeah. can have two cups of a French press now, because they've got the first cup and then in the thermos, and then have the second one that doesn't have the, the, ground, uh, the grind in there. Right, your cups will taste more consistent. Yes, yes. Um... But number one is basically you take the sock mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, you may, you may have used it before. So you can rinse it or, or mm-hmm. uh, boil it, whichever you choose. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to place it, you know, in this case, we're going to do it in a cup. So you place it inside the cup and you basically kind of stuff the sock down in the cup mm-hmm. and you put your coffee into that. Um, is there a is there a rough number or ratio that for how much coffee we oh, should put in the sock? Oh, we could get as, as detailed as you want here. <laughs> I mean, on the easy side, you want to just do a drip grind, right. which is sort of in the middle there. And uh, you want to uh, put in, I would say, <laughs> 17 to 1. I would call it, that's the brew ratio. So 17, 17 being water. 17 grams of water. Right. Uh, per one gram of coffee is, mm. is what it is. And th- you just need to do the math on that one. Don't get, don't go. Whip out your calculator Yeah, real quick. don't worry about it too much. I mean, if you've got a, a, a 340 gram cup of coffee, um, no, a cup, a cup, I should say, 
or 12 ounce, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You divide that 340 grams by the 17. That's the, the ratio you want. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, with when you divide 340 by 17, you get 20 grams. Wow. So you're going to put uh, 20 grams of coffee into that cup. And the little scoop you get and the little, you know, you open up the tins, the old days anyway, you open it, there was a scoop in there. That was one uh -huh. of my favorite parts. <laughs> it's like a toy at the bottom oh, of the Oh, yeah, cereal. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they usually hold, I'm going to say, eight grams. It depends on the coffee, if it's light or dark yeah. roasted. So two of those, and voila, you've got uh, probably about a much, much coffee uh, you want in your sock. That may be way too much information. Um, <laughs> so just go for two scoops, and if it's next time, if it wasn't enough, put a little more in. If it's too much, put a little less in. And like we've said before, we, you know, experiment, find what you like, yeah. stick with it. Yeah. Um, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to boil your water. Yes. You're going to let it, after it boils, sit off the boil for about 10 seconds or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the easiest way to do it, take it off the boil. When the little bubbles are starting to stop, Yeah. you're ready to pour that that hot water. Perfect. So we take that, yes. pour it over the coffee. Yep. Um, you know, like with French press even sometimes, it's good to, you know, look at the coffee and make sure all of it's getting mm -hmm. wet. And, and is, is in the extraction process. So you may want to grab a spoon, just give it a quick stir. I often find that with French presses, specifically if you pour, mm -hmm. you know, and let it bloom for a second, especially if it's fresh coffee, mm -hmm. you, you'll see it kind of come up a little bit. And if you stir it, boom, the mm -hmm. coffee sinks quite a bit. And you can actually fit more it's water, water in, which helps with that brew ratio. Or the pour over style of you'll see in, in, in baristas will be, pouring the hot water over their coffee and they go round and round. Yeah. Sometimes they stay in the middle, they higher, lower. There's there's actually reasons why, why they do that. Mm. But uh, one thing you can do with the going round and round is make sure this part looks dry. You just go over that part there, put the yeah. water onto it till it's wet, and then go back making sure it all is wet. And it's, yeah, not just dumping it in all at once. No, no, dumping it all at once, bad timing. And I mean, finally, you just let it sit for about two to three minutes, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, depends on your preference, but uh, right. I would uh, probably three minutes is is typical. You know, French press is typically four, but it depends who you are. Right. So once you've done that, uh, you're going to remove the sock, um, and then essentially you're ready to consume. That's um, right. And after you've consumed, you're ready to clean. <laughs> that's right, and uh, and that that's important to do. And going back to what we were saying before, how you're going to clean, mm. uh, you need to empty that. Uh, the the coffee that's now been used, spent, and put it into the the garbage or the the rubbish, as I would say, <laughs> uh, the rubbish tin. And you may try boiling the sock after that or rinsing it. You know, exactly depending on which way you choose to go, which yep. path you choose. Just get a pair of new socks from the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you could. Um, yeah, and again, like we said, you know, uh, there's a lot, so you can get one for your for, for so Hario sells um, quite a few, but you can get a lot of replacements for. I mean, almost any, any, I would say almost a lot of, uh, gravitational feed, you know, and infusion methods, that kind of stuff. Cold brew, you can use it with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's really a, like, you know, we've said it multiple times that there's a lot, a large variety of, of things you can make with this coffee. There's a large, I don't know. It just seems to give you a lot of options for the low cost and also the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. low form factor, small form factor. And we, we also need to say, we've talked about infusion method there or the gravitational feed, um, there is also uh, the, the the pour over method. We were um, sorry, I'm getting confused here. We put the coffee like a tea bag into the water. You can not put it all the way down into the water and have it at the top. Mm. And now you're gonna the method's gonna be slightly different, and you're gonna be pouring over and just a continual feed of water, like the like the cone, like the Chemex, and that that's a different style of of doing it. Um, I, I was sort of breaking them into the traditional style, put it in the water and let it sit in there. Well, and I think with those methods, you can really follow guides for those methods that are not inclusive of the sock method. So if you're doing yes. a V60 or if you're doing a pour over, I mean, you can kind of just follow those procedures that, you know, you know, if you just Google how to make a V60, those kind of things, it's going to be the same, but you'll just have your sock as a filter instead of the, the paper. Or yes, exactly. Or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we went through the infusion and, uh, you know, a lot of times there are, I mean, we're looking at a photo here. There, there's a lot of versions of there it for the gravitational yeah, yeah. feed. And, um, I've seen off. big ones with buckets and you can do a lot of <laughs> coffee and just put it all in. You 
basically tie a rubber band around the uh, the top of the sock. It's a yeah. big sock in this case, and it was one you've bought, so it's more commercial. Mm. You put a lot of coffee in there and dump it in, and it's it's interesting looking. Yeah, and so I think that uh, I think it's definitely something that everybody should check out. Everybody should take a look at. Um, and if I mean, you know, to reiterate, it is a it is a product. It is not just a sock. Um, so it's it's definitely something you should try out. It's mm. low cost. There's not really any downside to it that I can even think of. Maybe if you don't like cleaning up, yeah, yeah, but, a little bit dirty, yeah. But it is going to be a good method. It's it's, yeah. I would I would definitely prove it, Dad. Here's my question for you. What's that? Do you enjoy the sock method? Do you do? You, is it something you find you enjoy, or is it something you're like? You know, I just don't really use it, but it's not bad. I when we tried it out, I enjoyed it, no problem. But yeah. there's so many. I'm so fortunate. I have so many different methods. Right. I haven't really gone back to it very much. Um, yeah. And I, I've typically I will use either the French press, the cone, or an espresso. So. And we all get sort of stuck in our ways, <laughs> but uh, there's other ways out there. And this is one of those that I think uh, when I tasted it and did the testing of it uh, a little while ago, it, 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 you do the proportions right, get right. it right. It can taste really nice. Well, there's only, there's only so much room in the shelf, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I have got no more room on my shelf, but uh, yeah. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of uh, the Bean Stuff experience and joining us on the podcast. Thanks for getting this far in the podcast. Um, again, if you got any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, you know, if you want to see our beautiful faces, check us out on YouTube. But uh, we are just uh, we're just excited to share a new coffee method with you, and we uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye.